Hey guys, how's it going? It's Mr. Maestas here with some calculus for you. So we're going to take a look at some calculus problems here with continuity problems in which we have constants within our constant continuity problem. And we're really asked about um, finding constants like A or B given that we have some sort of piecewise function and we want to make sure that our function is continuous for all values of x. So um, these come up a lot on the AP exam for calculus. They come up a lot in just regular calculus classes. So I wanted to just give you some examples of these sp specific types of problems um, aside from any really um, concept that we've been talking about. So I'm going to give you three examples here. The first one I have is um, let's suppose I have f of x and I have this piecewise function. And notice here there is a constant, constant a right there, a. And um, I want to know what the value of a is going to be such that this function, f of x, is going to be continuous for all real numbers. So check this out. Really, these are really easy, but um, depending on your professor or um, your teacher, they may require you to do some, um, depending on the work that you need to do. I'm going to simplify it down for you, but then I'm going to show you what really, like, all the work needs to be depending on who your particular instructor is. So... The basic idea here, guys, is that for any function to be continuous at a point, the limit, the limit of x, the limit as x approaches whatever point we're looking for, um, value, in this case, for most piecewise functions, we're really looking at the cutoff value, so the end point at, in this case, x equals 0. So what we really need to find is that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x has to be equal to the value at <clears throat> at that x value f of zero this is the definition of continuity so that's really what we're looking for now are you going to need to write all of that out especially if you're doing an ap exam and you're doing like a, a multiple choice problem no there's an easy way to do it for a multiple choice problem however it's really important that you understand the basic underlying concept so um if you needed to do all this out again i'm going to say this again this is this first piece is if you need to write it all out depending on your instructor. So what you're going to want to do first, you're going to want to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. So from the right, I'm coming from values that are positive. So that's going to be this function right here. And as I approach from the right, I'm just going to plug in 0. This is a line, and that's going to be 2a. I want to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. From the left, I'm going to be using the other side of the function. So I'm going to plug in 0 there, and I'm going to get negative 5. Now, in order for, and then we're also going to find f of 0. f of 0, um, because we're looking at the equal to, that's the equal to, right? x less than or equal to. We're going to plug f of 0 into the top one here, and that's going to be negative 5. So in order for my entire limit, to be equal to my function value itself, which is negative 5, I'm going to need um, these two guys to be equal right here. Because the, if the limit from the left and the limit from the right, the limit from the right, sorry, and the limit from the left there are equal, then my limit exists. If they're not equal, then the limit doesn't exist. So in order for this whole situation to be continuous, I'm going to need to take negative, I'm going to need to take 2a, and that must be equal to 5. So 2a must be equal to negative 5, which means a must be negative 5 halves. And there's my answer for my problem. So if I want to do all the work out to make sure that I'm discussing the idea of continuity, I need to do the limits from the left and the right, the function itself, and then set these equal to one another so I can solve for a. Now let's talk about the quick way to do this. So that's the long way which is really the most appropriate way. But if you're talking about like for a multiple choice problem and we want to do this quickly, we can see that these are both linear, pro linear equations for both sides of this piecewise function. So as long as these are polynomials, then we know that these are going to be, um, these, are, these sides are going to be continuous for all values of x within these domain restrictions here for those piecewise. So since I know that those are going to be um, those are going to be continuous for all those x values. All I really need to worry about is this x equals 0. Well, I know that 
Um, since these are going to be continuous, all I'm re really worried about is a jump discontinuity, so some sort of breaking part on the x equals 0. That's only going to happen if when I plug in 0 here, that endpoint, which is going to be negative 5, if that endpoint does not line up with the endpoint when I plug in 0 here, if they do not line up, so if you can see me in the little screen there, if they don't line up, I'm going to have a jump discontinuity. If they do line up and they equal the same y value, then I'm going to have a continuous function. So what I could simply do is plug in my endpoint 0. I can plug in x equals 0 into both my equations. And I could just say, OK, so this one's here. I'm going to plug in 0 here. I'm going to get that equal to 2a and then solve for a. And I'll get the same answer. You see how that's a, a lot simpler, a lot quicker? So really all we're doing is checking that endpoint to see if that y value lines up. Let's take a look at that in a couple more examples. So example two here, um, I have a different function. This time I have the a on the um, times the x here. So let's use that same rule that I just did where we just kind of look to see if the y values line up. So let's go ahead and line up these y values by plugging in negative 1 in here. So that's not g of negative 1. That's just... 3 times negative 1 squared, which is going to give me 4. Okay, and that's got to line up with g of negative 1 because this is the equal sign here. So I'm going to plug that in here. And that's going to be negative a plus 3. All right, subtract 3 from both sides. And I'm going to get a equals negative 1. And I'm done. That's it. Okay, so it's really not that complicated as long as I know that these two are continuous for all real numbers. So again, um, we're looking at the endpoints. Now this one, we've got a little bit more to deal with. Now we have two ver uh, constants. We have A and B. So what we're going to do here is we're going to need to do um, all of the endpoints that we possibly have. We're going to need to plug these guys in. So I'm going to start with my endpoints of negative 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 here. <coughs> um, I made a bit of a mistake in my in my example here, guys. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Uh, we need to have this to be an equal sign, and we need to have this to be an equal sign. Okay, that's greater than or equal to this. And that has to be true, or else I'm going to have holes in the graph at both those parts, which is not going to make it continuous. So I need to at least have those um, um, solid so that they line up. Okay, so let's start back again. What I was saying is we're going to take negative 2. We're going to plug it in there. So we're going to have 2 times negative 2 squared plus negative 2 minus 1, which is going to give me, uh, let's see, that's 4, 8, um, 8 minus 4, the square squared is 4 times 8, 8 minus 2 minus 1, which is 5. And then we're going to plug in negative 2 in for the second one here. So that's going to give me g of negative 2 or h of negative 2. Which is going to give me negative 2a plus b. Okay, so here's the problem. I can take these and set them equal to one another. So I'm going to have um, negative, I'm going to write it down here, negative 2a plus b equals Five. So I want this one to be equal to this so that these line up. Now the problem here now is I still have A and B. Haven't solved it yet, right? So I need to solve for A and B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the next set of um, endpoints. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 in for here. And you know what? I'm going to use a different color so we can see that. So for this one, I'm going to plug negative 1 in right here. And I'm going to get um, negative A plus B. And I'm going to find g of, oh, dang, gun it. This should be a positive one. Man, I just messed up that whole problem, didn't I? This should be plus one, guys. These, these things have to line up. My bad. Came up with this so fast, and there I go. So we're going to go g of 1. So we got a plus b. Sorry, this was 1 in here. 1 in here is a plus b. And I'm going to get... 1 plus 2, which is 3. So then I'm going to make these equal. So I'm going to have a plus b equals 3. And now I have two equations with two um, unknown variables. So I can put those guys together. 
to solve using, I'm going to use elimination. You can use any method you want. I like elimination. I think it's a little cleaner. Okay, so I'm going to go negative, negative, negative. So I'm going to have negative 3a equals 2, and a is negative 2 thirds. And from this one, I know that b is 3 minus a. So b is going to be 3 minus negative 2 thirds, which is going to be, let's see, 9 thirds, 9, 11 thirds. So b is 11 thirds, a is negative 2 thirds, and I found my two constants. Okay, so uh, the bottom line for the, any of these problems, again, is you want to set, you want to set your endpoints. You want to plug your endpoints in and set them equal to one another. Then plug your endpoints in, set them equal to one another, and then you have two equations with two two equations with two unknowns, and then you can solve those. All right. So those guys, those are continuity problems with constants. We'll see you later, guys. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Mice math, mice out.